Hi, uh, my name is Ruben. I'm here with Chris from Movies and Munchies. And today we're going to be talking about, uh, well, some of them, our, our worst movies of 2021 so far. We're in July, we're heading towards the first week of uh, August. So uh, it's, it's a good time to kind of talk about those films that just go. Should I start with the first one? That yeah, I let's start with yours. Yeah. And you know, I'm really, I'm, I think this is going to be a great list because th some of the ones that you have on your list, I really enjoy. So I think this is going to be a good discussion. <laughs> yeah, so go, let's, yeah, let's take a look at your first one. Okay, so The Hitman's Wife, Bodyguard. Um, I have, that's the sequel to the first one, obviously. Um, Selma Hayek, I thought was great in it. I thought she was crazy. I enjoyed her. I think I enjoyed the characters more than I enjoyed the film. I think that was the issue. There was a lot of weird soft focus there's the same technique that they had in the first film um i think the director is patrick hughes uh, he also directed uh, expendables 3 so uh, <laughs> you're like okay. there you go i just didn't laugh like i know there were funny dialogue moments and it's a comedy action film and the story for me just felt like what is the story like where is the story where am I meant to be invested in these characters? Because I really felt like by the time you hit the end of the first film, you felt like they were best friends. You had the, the hitman and the assassin, you thought they were together. And here they start off in such a weird tempo. It's like, no, I hate him. It's like, I understand for a comedic purpose. They're like, oh no, I hate him. Don't call anything, anyone but him. <laughs> and then they eventually get together and you have this really tongue in cheek, heavy uh, swear words. Summer Hayek swearing is funny, which I thought w worked well. Uh, but by the, by the time I got to the end of the film, I think it was like five minutes afterwards, I was like, what was that film about? And to quote Jeremy Jans, he's like, I'm going to forget this movie in T minus one day. And yeah, yeah that, that was it. I, I, you know, I can agree with you there totally, because I think the story was super generic. The villain um, was was just it was rote. It was there was nothing special, um, even though Antonio Banderas, I like him in mm. it. And, you know, I liked like Selma Hayek at the beginning, she annoyed me, really did. It took me a, a few a little, a few beats to barely to click with her and to be like, OK, I can deal with you. Um, and for me, I think I liked the humor when it was two out of the three. You know, you take two of those, whoever they yeah. were, and yeah. I think their humor clicked better than yeah. when all three of them got there because it was almost like there was too much and nobody knew who to, took, to, who to take the lead on, on the joke or the timing or anything. I think they all have such great comedic timing, uh, especially Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson are notorious for doing ad-lib lines. Uh, you get both of them on screen together, it's fine when they click, but yeah, adding that third one, just, yeah, just, you're like, ah, oh, what do we do? We need to contain them. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Now, I, I, I wouldn't, I didn't put it on my worst list, uh, okay. but it is, I do agree with you that it is a forgettable film that I would much rather watch the first one over and over and yeah. over again than yeah. the second one. The se it just, it was eh, it almost like, like money grab or they, you know, we had such good, maybe word of mouth success after the first one yeah. that let's do this. And it just, yeah. Honestly, Ryan Reynolds sells a lot now as well. So you put his name on it and people go like, yeah, I, I want to see that because he's funny. He's Deadpool, you know, you, you, you want to see that. Uh, Deadpool promoting uh, Free Guy. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I that was, was like, yes. so good. Yeah, I mean, and Korg, who was great. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so when when it, it's revealed that we're going to meet Ryan Reynolds' dad in in this, who did you think? Like, I whispered to my son who was sitting next to me as we're watching this. I'm like, okay, it better be X. Who did you think the dad was going to be? I think I thought it was going to be someone like Pierce Brosnan or Mel Gibson. Um, oh. Yeah, because I was I was looking for the more gruff, uh, worldly guy. Like, who would be really funny to have with us? Who did you think it was going to be? Uh, Hugh Jackman. Huh, that, oh, yeah, okay. I guess see, that I would have been amazing. See, I think <laughs> so should have done that. Right? It would have been just this, this oh. comedic coup right there. To, uh, even if it's just for a little bit. Now, I, I ended yeah. up really liking Morgan Freeman. I think he did a phenomenal job, but it just, it was like, dang it. Yeah, you had this yeah. opportunity and yeah, well. Oh my gosh, that is a missed opportunity. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> Probably too expensive to get in these time, yeah. 
Probably. But he yeah. might have done it because they're such good friends. They have their frenemy yeah. moment. But yeah, they might have done it. So what is your first one? Um, these, well, let's see. I, I'm just going to go in the order that I typed them out. It's not necessarily yeah. in, in particular order. That's pretty order. much what I've done, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so it's The Devil Below. Now, this had, I guess, some kind of VOD release or something, but the first time I saw it was when it hit Netflix, at least in the US, just like yeah. a month or two ago. And it's this, you know, this um, kind of like a, a movie about like The Descent, where you have this group of people who have to go underground and here they're just explorers or they're, they're trying to, remember what it is i mean that's how forgettable this movie is the best part about it is will Patton, and he's barely in it and oh. it just like the characters are completely ill-defined um their their motives or their actions are terrible the lighting while could be really effective at sometimes because you have this dark and you can use the darkness and some of the shadow to your advantage because supposedly there's this underground, uh, like this coal mine that's just been burning. So you can have, you know, you have some fire or some light happening. And the problem is that everything is so dark that you don't get to see any detail and you don't get to see anything. So even if something moves behind the characters, you barely see it and it's not enough to really engage you or to go, ooh, what was that? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, that's one that we didn't get here uh, on the UK Netflix, so I missed out on that one. Um, I don't think I'll be going to that. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I was gonna say I don't think you actually missed out on it. It was. Yeah. It was. It was just. It was like I don't know, uh, ninety minutes maybe, or maybe longer than that. But it was just. It was. It was too long. You know, five minutes was too long because you didn't care about anything that was going on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um, next on my list, I have Chaos Walking. I'll, I'll let you talk about this one first, and then I will rant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is on my list also. Is um, it? Okay. Yeah, I, and I think it's um, missed opportunity. I mean, we have Tom, okay. Holland, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Yes. Sorry, okay. Tom Holland and everybody. Yes, and yeah. Mads Mikkelsen, and you yeah. just have so the, on this planet where men's thoughts are projected out audibly, and um, like this aura is given off, and when um, well, who's the actress? See, this is how forgettable this movie is. The actress. <laughs> Um, Daisy Ridley. Daisy Ridley. I was going to say Ridley Scott. And again, see, that's, that's Ray right. from yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. Yes. She, she crash lands on this planet. And some of the moments actually made me laugh out loud. I, I thought they were great. I thought the, um, as Tom Holland, as he's like, no, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't stop, stop. You know, and she gets to hear all of these things like, oh, you're so pretty. Wait, no, don't say that. It's freaking her out. And I think that interaction is really good. And I thought that had, had some moments there um just but as the movie went along it just became uninteresting and i just i i began to click less and less with it and it was another one of those that i just ah, okay i've seen it there's like there was a lot of potential here that i saw and that i wanted to see more of and because the world itself was beautiful too the world and just it's a creative thought to be able to have this idea and mm, so it comes from a trilogy of books. And the first one's called A Knife of Never Letting Go. And I highly recommend uh, reading the books. They're incredible. And if you're a fan of the books, you're literally every single moment in this film, you're just gonna hate more and more and more and more. There are moments in this film where it just feels like they spat at the book because they just take away really core cool premises. Like some of the animals, they're meant to be intelligent, so much so that you get to hear conversations um of, of what they talk about like how they think so some it's not like full like uh, dialogue conversations but it's really like um like a dog was always hungry and it's always like uh poo dog hungry woof you know it's like and or, or he's calling his uh, master's name and it's like as you you can imagine what your dog would say to you it's those sort of things that they really took out and they didn't lean nearly it heavy enough into the the type of power they had with their thinking because a lot of the shaping of worlds the stuff they could do with them some of them that had more control over their mind um powers were able to do amazing things and really um completely change what a person can see and so there's so much going on in the world that they took out the ending doesn't exist in in the book like they just made it up completely it's a totally different ending the characters do totally different things and so you get about three quarters of the way you're kind of going oh i guess they kind of had to do their own thing and then you're like what on earth is this nonsense 
<laughs> like they've taken a bit from the second book and kind of made it the end of the book but but yeah you're just you're, yeah yeah no and it's, it's it's not to say that tom holland and daisy ridley weren't great and matt mickelson you know they had real presence um but the characters that you if you've read the book you'd be like oh my gosh this is just really hurtful and the same sort of feeling for people who read ready player one um and love the love the books and then they went to the film and went okay this is really creative but definitely very different to what um is in uh, the film so ready player one i enjoyed and i know everybody that watched that that hadn't read the book was like this is mind-blowing no nothing like this has been done before and then those that read the book are like yes but <laughs> yeah I, I feel exactly same way yeah i was i was like okay going in with expectation it's going to be different like i yeah. loved the book the book was phenomenal and yeah to have yeah you, you just but i didn't i didn't read uh the knife never letting go or any of the trilogies so this was yeah. like it's interesting to hear you say how how much is different it's so different yeah mm -hmm. yeah so yeah that that was how i thought about it uh should we move yeah yeah um, let's see. thunder thunder force let's talk about thunder force <laughs> uh, oh. with this one? gosh it I loved Jason Bateman. I, okay, that's worth watching alone. Just just for Jason Bateman. He, he just was, watch that scene. Yeah, exactly. He was great in it. The rest of it was just. I mean, I I laughed at moments, mm. you know. I but but so much of it just kept going. Um, I think also too that they showed so much in the trailer yeah, that there absolutely. was nothing left once we got there. That it was like. Eh, I remember watching the trailer, laughing, thinking, oh, that could actually be good. And then watching the film and going, where's the stuff? Where, where is it? I think I still laughed at the bit where they get into the really expensive car, but it's so low to the ground and they're so large. Um, well, they have larger body types uh, like me. And I just thought, I thought that was funny because I thought that was realistic. Like things you don't think superheroes would have to deal with, um, you put them in that. They should have done more of that. I think that would have worked uh, more because they're great, like as an comedic timing, Octavia Spencer has it. She's also a fantastic um, actress. You know, she's won a few awards. The same goes for her counterpart. Um, she's done a few films that have not done so well. Uh, Midsummer Murders or something. What was that one with the puppets? That was just- Oh, awful. I didn't see that one. I, I avoided that one. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah I, don't, I, I, yeah. don't do <laughs> But you know, she was in one, Melissa McCarthy was in one, um, as a writer as a writer and her turn was phenomenal yeah. i mean i i really think that she should have been recognized you yeah. know for that because it was, such, yeah. it was such a departure yeah she needs to do more though she's she's obviously great in that genre absolutely uh, but maybe she just likes joy more than because that was really dark as well it so was. It, was, it was yeah but yeah so the next one on my list i believe you reviewed it um today <laughs> Cosmic Sin. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Oh, it just hit, I, and I, this was another one of those um, video on demand ones, I think, but it hit Netflix in the US uh, right. today that we're recording this. And yeah. like, I, I know what the story is trying to go for. So when yeah. I say it doesn't make sense, it's not that I don't understand what they were trying to do. It's mm -hmm. that they couldn't put a coherent thought together to make this movie compelling in any sort of way, shape, or form. This movie makes no sense. Like, it literally doesn't make sense. You just, you try and break it down and you're like, what on earth is happening? I will hold my hand up and say, we got, my wife and I, we got three quarters of the way in and we said, no, can we please find something else to watch? We could, literally couldn't watch any more of it. I don't think I've ever felt so disappointed by a movie poster before because the poster reminds me of the Tom Cruise um, Live, Die, Repeat yes. uh, film. And I was like, yeah, it's going to be something like that. It's got this person. Oh, no, it's got Bruce Willis. And and that makes me sad to say because I used to go, it's got Bruce Willis. And now I go, oh, no, it's got Bruce Willis. There's a few of them. John Travolta being one of them. Morgan Freeman, unfortunately, is in that lot as well. Uh, we can talk about him in a bit, but Edward Drake directed this film and he's now done three straight to DVD or VOD mm -hmm. films with Bruce Willis. So it feels like that's the partnership. Bruce Willis is kind of phoning it in just for the paycheck. paycheck. He, the look on his face, he just looks like he doesn't want to be there. 
Yeah, no, then that was it. I mean, every time you saw him, he was bored, disconnected, just yeah. kind of like, okay, I'm going to do these lines and then move on. Like not even what's going on in the story so that I can get into it. It was just, I'm just going to deliver these with- It does actually make smirk. me worried about him. I do wonder if there's a health thing because literally like there's, if you go back from like way back from Moonlighting to like the early Die Hards or Die Hard of the Vengeance or some of those 80s, 90s um, action films, he was so animated and really into the art and craft. And now it just, there's like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just some of these rogue things that are just boring. Yeah, what's yeah. happening? Yeah. Well, and, and, and it, it, it baffled me, and I don't know how big the budget for this movie was, but every aspect of it, short of that one little scene that, that was, I mean, it was obviously CGI because they're flying through space, but that was mildly impressive. It, it made no sense, but it was, <laughs> it was mildly impressive. But then like their suits, like the costume design, I mean, I said in my review that it looks like they're wearing sweatpants with some football pads on. I know, because yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah. It, there's no, it doesn't look like you could travel anywhere. I mean, even through the cold in this and be okay, let alone through space. There are episodes of Stargate Atlantis that looks like if they had bigger budget than this film. And that's, you know, that's way back in the 2000s, you know, when they didn't have much per episode for a repeat program of a really low budget sci-fi. Yeah. Um, yeah. So talking yeah. about really low budget films, the one I have next on my list is Vanquish. Have you have you heard of that? I have heard of it. That's a uh, Ruby Rose, right? Yeah. Is that, Ruby okay, Rose yeah, I, and Morgan and Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to see this one yet. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's on your list. Come on. So George Geller, who wrote Bad Boys and Bad Boys for Life and directed An Eye for an Eye, which was also with Morgan Freeman and John Travolta. I seen there's a pattern here of like straight to VOD bad. I don't want to say bad actors because I know they're not bad actors. Mm -hmm. I just feel like they are using, I guess they're phoning it in for some of the time, but they're also using what the script gives them because mm -hmm. you know, your performance can really only be as strong as I guess the words on paper. Uh, what you have to work with uh but yeah the first 20 minutes of vanquish has it feels like 20 minutes it can't be that long it has a very long credit intro scene like one of those really really early films where they show all the credits and people that were involved in the film at the beginning of the film mm -hmm. so you go through it's probably six to seven minutes of just credits and hyped up 90s music with and this person is but you're not seeing anything and then maybe they'll flash to a, a weird kind of cutaway in the back to the credits and this goes on for a really long time so by the time you get into the film you're like what on earth is this nonsense like they should pick up kind of like what the mcu are doing now they have like immediate moment of the film of something a cataclysmic that will happen then they bring up their credits and title of the film and then they go back into it and so you've hooked this one unhooks you. It's like the worst <laughs> right from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, right from the beginning. So that's just how it starts. And it's just downhill from there, which is sad because Morgan Freeman is brilliant. Ruby Rose, as a fighter, she's fantastic. You see her in John Wick. I think it was John Wick 2. She was incredible. Yeah. Um, and other, a few other martial art films. I'm not so sure on Batwoman because I've seen a couple of episodes and that, that series just makes me cry and makes me sad inside. Um, but yeah, this film is definitely on that list. One to avoid. See, I'm not going to watch it. I, I maybe I might watch the first, the opening sequence to watch, watch the, the title yeah. sequence. <laughs> that's just oh, that sounds bad. What's next on your list? Okay, this one was a Netflix original um, called Sky Higher, Hasta al Cielo, and it is a, um, it takes one of the actors from um, Money Heist, and okay. I, I saw him and I'm like, ooh, okay, this this might be cool, you know, and it's um, <clears throat> it just it's a boring story. It goes nowhere. You have, um, it's kind of a gangster-ish feel with some younger guys and um, then, you know, a, a female, um, not really counterpart, but I mean, just a love interest and this guy who's trying to, he's a, he's a bad guy, but he's trying to do some of the right things and he gets a relationship with a girl that probably shouldn't because the father doesn't approve and all kinds of stuff. And it just, it. I love the sigh. Yeah, it, well, that that's really what it was. Like I was watching and it just, at, 
each minute that passed by was just more and more let down and just like, what in the world am I watching? I mean, there are there are a couple of exciting moments. Like, I, I can't say that it's just, it is bad from start to finish because it's not. I mean, there are some, it does have moments in there. And some of the characters, like, I began to like somewhat, but I, I couldn't become overall invested in them, um, mm. either from their decisions or just maybe the lack of development. And so as it goes along, it just, it, it, they then make a decision which was shocking towards the end. I, <clears throat> from oh, a so story perspective. Okay. Huh? So that caught you. It did, story. yeah. And I, like, I'm not sure I liked it. Actually, I know I didn't like that because it was, it was against what I was hoping for within right. the story, <clears throat> but it made sense. And it, um, so I don't fault the story for that. I mean, it made sense in, in some of the characters' motives and their, um, just their actions. So, okay, just because I didn't agree with how it should have gone, that doesn't in itself make it bad. It was just everything else that surrounded it. It was just a boring movie and it wasn't worth, wasn't worth the time that I sat to watch it. And then once it was over, I was like, okay, moving on. That was, I, I don't want to watch that ever again. Huh. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll give it a miss. Um, next one on my list is going to upset a few people. So when I watched it the first time, I enjoyed it. But every time I think about the film afterwards, I'm like, this film is so badly written and it's got so many plot holes. And then I think about how it's filmed. And I'm like, <sighs> Army of the Dead. <laughs> so I know the the, 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 the Snyder uh, fans are gonna hate anybody saying anything about bad, badly about the, you know, the Snyderverse, but there is a camera lens that he uses that was only used in Japan in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, it's a Canon 50 millimeter. It's got an f-stop of 0.95 and it was nicknamed the dream lens. So if you're watching this film, if you remember, there's a lot of sequences that are dreamlike. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's why it looks like that. And so I remember thinking to myself, I couldn't figure out there were some scenes that I thought were flashbacks because of how shallow or how dreamlike it was. And then eventually you're like, oh no, okay, this is, this is all happening now, but it, it's so shallow or dreamlike focus, but you have these incredibly lavish scenes that he's filmed. You want to see what's happening, happening in the background, but you can't because it's all like, this is a dream movie. And he does this, like the, what was the reason for filming uh, Batman in the square ratio? It didn't really add anything. And he knew he was filming, he, his film was gonna be released on um, IMAX. So you get to IMAX and you're watching it. So I'm just digressing, using it as an example that he loves to be creative, which is fantastic. Um, and you should totally be, that's art. Um, but I don't think they always work. And so the more I think about the, the creativity is the more it irritates me because there were so many character flaws and things that characters did that I'm like, why did they, why didn't they rescue that person? That person was standing right in front of them. The way it was filmed, like literally could have just pulled them forward and they would have been fine. Why did everybody not know that this person was going to betray them? You said it right at the beginning of the film. <laughs> um, why couldn't we see the movie that was shown in the credits at the beginning of the movie? Because that looks so great. Like the slow-mo sequence that they were introducing. It's like, that looks like a film I want to see. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's my yeah. rant. <laughs> well, and I can I can get I can agree with a lot of those points too, because the the shallow depth of focus really bothered me. Like I, I don't mind it as an effect, but when it was used so much as as the primary um, shooting format, it just, it became, I don't know, when things move in and out of frame and that it just, everything went blurry and like, what can be cool for a moment, you yeah. know, but when it's overused like that, it just, that bothered me. Um, you didn't even talk about the slow-mo yet. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Th that uh, it, once or twice. I'm okay with that a little bit, maybe. I mean, I'm beginning to get more and more uh, upset with the amount of slow-mo that, that is being used. Um, and I think as cameras get higher and higher frame rates. Um, you know, like, let's they do can, it all the time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, cause it doesn't look jittery when they when they slow it down. Um, now the, the, the character actions at the end, that really did piss me off. I mean, the first time I saw it and then I watched it again with my wife and the, the girl, his daughter kills everybody. 
Really? She's, she's, yeah, absolutely responsible. What a ridiculous notion. The whole story centers on her. Ah, it's so frustrating. Yeah, she, she, she shouldn't have gone, but she has a noble motive for going. Okay, I can get behind this. She wants to rescue these, these mothers that have been trapped on in, inside Vegas. Cool. Totally get behind that. That's great. You know that at some point somebody's gonna that's gonna cause some conflict. It's gonna put a little bit of danger in there. Okay. So she gets there. She brings. She saves. I guess one of the moms. I thought the mom got on the um the original mom that she attended to get. I thought she got on the helicopter. Never she saw did. her again after that. Wait, what happened? Yeah, I, Wait, I don't. She... I, I don't know. But then De Batista dies. Tignataro dies. The the mom. I, maybe she fell out. I don't know. And so all of that. All of that destruction is gone or is is for naught because she chose to go after this and put everybody else in danger and everybody dies, including the person that she was trying to rescue. Yeah. I, that that part of it is the point of the film. That yeah. exactly that part of it right there. That was like, okay, I don't like that part of the story at all. Now, yeah. one thing though, I've I've got to give, I mean, massive credit, because I liked it. I I had a lot of fun with it, especially mm -hmm. the first time I saw it in the theater. I think that was my first time back in the theater. Um, uh, since since I didn't get to see it at the, yeah, the cinema, yeah. So that Maybe was that missing. you know that was fun for me, um, mm -hmm. and it was you know it was a popcorn flick. But once I found out, and I didn't know this going in, that Tignataro had actually been a replacement character, and she didn't film it. You know they didn't reshoot those scenes that she shot on a green screen, mm -hmm. and um, and Zack Snyder, if I'm remembering correctly he wasn't even in the same room with her doing it. like he was over like zoom or something like that to wow. give her direction and okay. you know and then they they took the time to rotoscope out the old um the old actor whoever that was put her in and I mean, she was brilliant she was an awesome addition to the cast and i'm so glad that she was in there because it was so funny just the mm. snide um and sarcastic line delivery but i could not tell that that was a replacement um, person technology, who had not been. Man. Yeah, Very exactly. Well Incredible. And talking about the technology, I mean, that is something we could se celebrate about the film. The world that Zach has created was really interesting. And that's what made me more upset because I really wanted to know more about the world. So you see the incredible zombie horse. I mean, how cool was that thing? The guy sitting on the horse was like, dang. And then we get the zombie tiger. I was like, shut up, that's awesome. Those are the things I wanted to know more about the world. We had those various versions of the zombies, you know, the sleepers, and when it rained, they all started like waking up, and then the, the really intelligent ones that had a higher RP. That's the story we want to know about. Yeah. We don't need the heist, really. It's them. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, and I think uh, maybe, you know, because of the, the last scene, maybe they're opening it up to... Yeah, to, they're apparently might... doing more, so... Yeah, and I don't know if you caught it. I didn't catch it the first time. My my youngest son saw it um, right at the very beginning, as the as the military trucks are leaving. You see two glowing lights in the sky. They go Phew! like that. I mean, if you're not looking for it, you, or, or you don't even pay attention to it, it you miss it. And um, if what you does that seen the, like? Aliens that what what the infection is, what the zombie infection is, it's aliens. And that's why the glowing blue eyes, that maybe even some of the, the See, metallic cool. underneath. Ooh, tell me more about that. Right? <laughs> See, and uh, that's where I'm hoping that if they do a sequel to this, because you have the guy who got on the plane, um, yeah. Omari Hardwick. And um, so I'm hoping <laughs> that, that that continues on because that it can be a rich story, especially if they dive into that and maybe even get to trace it back to what happened to where it came from. But he's infected, right? He is infected, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rent over. What's next on your list? Um, this is okay, so this is a French um it was based off of a web series and it's called The Misadventures of Hetty and Copeman. And okay. it um it came out on Netflix. I decided to give it a try, and full disclosure, I didn't finish it because mm. it was terrible. Now I, I and I gave it, I've heard some from some French people who who enjoyed the movie because they were fans of the web series. So I think uh, if you if you have that context going in, then 
you might want to see it. For anybody who has not seen it though, it is absolutely atrocious. It's one of these things where you're just thrust into two wildly annoying characters. Um, one of them, Coke Man, he walks around with um, a fur coat and underwear. And it's not even boxers. I mean, they're tidy whities And he goes to a wedding like that. He just walks around and nobody seems to bat an eye at this. I mean, you know, police don't say anything. It's just, it, you, you kind of improperly exposed. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's just, it's, it's, it wasn't funny. It was, all of the jokes were way forced. Like they were just trying so hard to just make this funny. You try and push it, push it, push it. Um, it, it centers around drugs. And so you have some opportunity to do some really fun things with that, especially as either somebody is um, inebriated or intoxicated or just super blown out of their mind um, or on their search for more, you know, something like that. And they had little bits and pieces of this, but then it just, it was, for me, it was terribly annoying. And I just, there, it was going nowhere either. And so I was just like, okay, I've, I'm, I'm like three quarters of the way in, I gotta go. Like, you, you know, I'm gonna cut my losses right now. <laughs> the next one on my list I have is called Fried Barry. Have you heard about Fried Barry? I haven't. Okay, so in 2017, there was a short film called Fried Barry, the same name, and uh, that got quite popular. It's filmed on location in Cape Town, so my wife's uh, previous homeland. And so uh, we were like, wanted to have a look at that. It's basically about a, a drug-induced guy named Barry, who is a very abusive dude um, that goes from one bar to another on a massive ben bender until he gets adopted by aliens. Or does he? Like, we don't know. Uh, and so that's that's the premise. Now, for a 15-minute short movie, it works. But in 2020, we got, I think they, they made it, and then so now we have it this year. Uh, Shudder bought the rights to this, and it was became a, a full feature. And we have the same director of the short, and we have the same actor. And the actor, he has such a weird-looking face. He's perfect for the role. It's just a crazy bender. But the thing is, the 15 minutes are dragged out into an hour and 45 minutes. And basically, it's the same story, but all of these scenes are... So it's just an excessive amount of sex, violence, and, and none of it really goes anywhere because it's just like long scenes. You kind of get that he's just a douchebag, but you don't know really if he's being controlled by an alien presence or whatever. And by the time you get to the end, you kind of have to make up your mind about what actually happened. And it just pissed me off because I was like, for one thing, I don't think Cape Town Cape Town is like that, damn it. Um, so maybe I'm a bit biased because and, and, <laughs> they make it out to look really nasty. I'm just like, yeah, maybe. Like, I guess every city has a has a, a dark a ground a bit if, you, if you find it, yeah. Um, filmmaking wise, it's a decent film and it looks great um, and like beautifully shot. The color palette they use for the, the vibrancy of the nastiness that you see on the screen is there. But I just wasn't enjoying it. Like by the time I got to the end, I was like, yeah, I really hate that. Interestingly, there is all the critics really loved it. It was like 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience gave it 50. So th it's, there's that device of splits again, which I found very interesting. Do you think it's maybe like some of that pretentious, like, ooh, this is supposed to Absolutely. be art. And so we're this... gonna say it's wonderful, even though yeah. everybody knows that it's crap. Yeah, so I said sometimes a horse is a horse. Oh yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this one I think was mixed reviews by everybody. For me, I didn't enjoy it. It's the space um, drama, maybe, Sorry, I'm, Voyagers. I missed, you, I missed you there, you cut out for a few seconds. Oh, oh no, okay, let's see here. My, my good now. Can you hear me? Yep. All good. Oh, okay. Well, so it's the it is the space drama ish called Voyagers, and okay. the premise. You know, you have this Earth is becoming unstable. It's not not a good place to live anymore. So they find a distant planet that they're going to send all of these, um, all of these younger people who have been bred basically. Um, for this really long journey. And it's so far away that they're not even going to get there. It's going to be, I think, their grandchildren that reach this planet, and then they're going to repopulate. And once on the ship, you have, um, they discover that they're being kind of controlled and subdued so that they can uh, remain kind of just placid and, and compliant. And once they discover that, well, then some free will kicks in. People start to, well, we're not going to take that. And then it, it really, it becomes what well, it really was at the very beginning. 
it's Lord of the Flies in space. And oh, okay. well, that sounds and, interesting. Well, it, and it should be right. I mean, Lord of the Flies is a it, it's a classic for a reason. I mean, yeah. you have this this struggle of what happens when you when you take away all the rules and people are left to decide for themselves how they're going to behave. You know, and then you have that struggle for power and everything. All this takes place in there. It's just, it's not done well. It's, um, the characters become fairly uninteresting. And there are moments that are fun. Um, and you have Colin Farrell in there who is like the, he wasn't supposed to go on it, but he's been the one who, I guess this was his brainchild, his vision. And he's been with these children since they were born. And so he feels a certain connection with them and just, a, you know, the reason to go. Um, but as it went along, it was, they, there was no real compelling reason to want to continue to watch because it doesn't go as, um, I think as far as Lord of the Flies does in every aspect. It, it mimics, it mimics it in a lot of ways. Um, do you think they were it, afraid to do that because of like where we are today or there was just a film was like, we don't need to. I. I don't know because they they weren't afraid to show some violence and they did that and um because you actually have like the biggie character and the simon character who who meet their ends in the same way in the book um mm -hmm. i think it's just how it was finally all put together and all executed it just it didn't click um at least for me and that's why i said like you know it, it was um you know some people really really enjoyed it um, all right you know, and you had some great actors in there. And that's that's kind of the bummer too, is that I don't think that they all got to show what they could really do in this. Um, and some of it, it could be argued too, that you know what, they're well, they're being subdued by, by some of the things that they're ingesting. And so that is why they're just kind of boring to look at. And their, their line delivery is very just calm and <laughs> monotone almost, you know. But at yeah. some point, that's not enough to engage me in the story. And that's what happened. Sorry, I was looking at my eye line because it's so confusing. Like I'm looking at you on the screen, but my camera is like up there. So it looks like I'm not looking at you. Well, that's okay. My camera's here, my computer's here. So <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, that sounds like I'm disappointed with that because I, I, I saw the write-up. I never got the screener. I did ask for one, uh, so I was sad. And that, because I saw the cast and I was like, looks great. A great cast, great premise. Uh, yeah, it's a pity that some of those don't, never really pan out the way you want them to. Yeah. Yeah, What's next was, on your list? Uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, Outside the Wire, another Netflix one. Because you figure also, most of these that, that I've got on my list were were from Netflix because for the first most part of the year, at least in California, we were still under lockdown. No theaters yes, were open and everything. Else. So, Netflix yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah. And so, Outside the Wire, it, it, good premise. I think, again, you know, kind of a, a futuristic sci fi um, where. I'm just like I was disappointed. <laughs> um, uh, he's I the Falcon. Exactly. This is the Falcon. Yeah. Falcon. Yes. It's Captain America. Yes, he is the new Captain America. I, I love him too. <laughs> oh my gosh, my children would be so disappointed in me right now. I can't even. I mean, I. I okay, I'm pulling out IMDb because I just can't. I, this bothers me now that Ask my brain back. is on is on a, a lockdown that's not allowing me to. to Anthony think. Mackie. Thank you. Ah, yes. So Anthony Mackie, I mean, he's, he, it's revealed pretty early on that he is, um, he's not really human ish. I mean, he's not fully human. And, um, so he's, he's impervious, but it, there's a, there's a social commentary to the movie that you, you can kind of get behind. Um, it just didn't, it, it didn't land well. Um, you know, I think it, it's it's kind of about it's about war, it's about technology, um, and it just it didn't connect, and the twist wasn't really a twist. Um, yeah. It just so it so as everything played out, like you had all of these great individual pieces, but when put together, it was just like, ugh, um, yeah, it didn't work. I think I enjoyed it when I watched it um, originally, but I, when you get to the end, it doesn't pay off. Uh, which is the most disappointing thing about it because it does hinge on that ending and then you get there and you're like oh okay great um i like the technology all the sci-fi bits that they used his suit was really cool you know what it was made out of um basically ai 
walking around. Um, and that was cool. And the, the, the way you get to see them use like the fight sequences that they had, I thought that was that was great. Uh, but they didn't really go anywhere with it. Not really, because they kind of established what he is at the beginning. You can guess it. They, like you said, there's no real re reveal. Really, the story we want to know is what happens afterwards. Uh, as long as what happens if it doesn't happen. <laughs> like if there was something more, we, or before, because they, they hint at this guy having done so much and he's got so much history. Um, yeah, yeah, that's disappointing. Um, my last one before we do like honorable mentions or whatever is on your list, unfortunately, is Space Jam 2. <laughs> um, it's 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 made it there. So, yesterday I released my spoiler review and I talked about the ending stuff, and I won't do any spoilers because obviously it's just come out at the time of recording this. But I have to say, this does feel like a shameful way for Warner Brothers to show everything that they own in the movie and put it up there. Really? And the thing is, it's not done well. Like, mm. when you get to the main part of the story, it's the basketball match between so-and-so and so-and-so. Um, I'm not going to say what the characters are, but if you've seen the cornucopia of marketing, you would have seen a few of the clips and trailers. And in the background is what I think most fans or, or, or dads and mothers are going to watch because they're probably not interested in the film. The film itself is really dull. Like it, it, it's it's so convoluted and over the top. It's so messy and there's so much going on that for the most part, you're going to be looking for those Easter eggs in the background with the, the characters that are there. And so you find yourself looking at a character like it, kind of. And then you're like, Kong, kind of. And then you're like, Iron Giant, kind of. And then you're like, Scooby-Doo, kind of and you, you're picking up all the it's like they're all going to a fancy dress party and so they chose actors to wear costumes of the characters that they own but they didn't look like the characters that they own and so it just felt cheap so where ready player one you had all those characters and they looked like them when you saw freddy he looked like freddy when you saw chucky you look like, like oh my gosh why they, why they put chucky in there you know so many when you saw iron giants you know smack running through you're like yeah that's amazing and here, you're just like, what on earth? It's fun to try and pick up the Easter eggs. Okay, so that's just one annoyance. But the best part in this film is when they bring the, te the team together. When Bugs, and my background, Bugs, uh, <laughs> um, and his team, you see like a little montage and they bring their characters together and you get to visit all the world. So you see Westeros, you see Casablanca, you see the Matrix, and that's all fun, but that's the best pit. I actually fell asleep in this movie. Like there was a minute where I don't know what happened because I fell asleep. And this film holds that claim to no other film has ever done that for me. Even the worst films, I've never fallen asleep. I know I'm getting old, but seriously, <laughs> I was just like, how can a film uh, with cartoon characters and a basketball game be, uh, ha how can so much on screen be happening and still make you bored enough to fall asleep for a minute? that is uh, my review so a good film yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i haven't watched it yet but wow i really want to see it now <laughs> hey totally shit there is there is a mad max moment uh which i would say is the best thing i've seen in a long time and you will laugh your head off like it's fantastic and okay almost worth almost worth watching the film just for that one scene just for that scene okay <laughs> right on well i've got one more um, okay Brilliant. and I uh, it it. I'm not even sure if it had potential, but whatever. Liam Neeson, Lawrence Fishburne, The Ice Road. Oh, this is so funny. We differ in in theories in this one. <laughs> like the the premise, they have to deliver this this drill or something yeah, to a collapsed yeah, heavy thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, v via truck um, across the the ice know, lake. This, Thing. this ice lake yeah in um in canada i think and so it's on this ice road and they're driving these big rigs to rescue these miners who are trapped because of a cave-in now yeah. i don't care about the miners because i know nothing about them um, yeah because they're not giving us any history or background yeah absolutely yeah and there's and there's some kind of weird um like they're butting heads there's there's all kinds of conflict within the miners themselves but we don't know what it is we because we've never we don't know anything about them so it's almost like well there's this story over here and then we have liam neeson and lawrence fishburne and 
uh, another girl, all driving these trucks. And the premise could be kind of cool. I mean, you have, you know, the heavy trucks on this, on this road ice made of, purely made of ice. Yeah, yeah you know, that you know, there's things. danger there. And there's a, there's a time limit. I mean, there's an urgency to what they're doing, not only because the miners could die, but also they can't just, I would assume, can't just hang out on the ice all the time because it could crack at any moment or whatever. And it's, it's predictable. Um, again, like the, the miners, I just, I didn't care about them. Um, even like the fight scenes that happen when Liam Neeson actually gets to get out and kick some butt, it was so boring. And it was almost, there was one or two points where like they threw some punches and then I'm going to stand here and wait for you to get back up so you can then come attack me. (laughs) So then we can repeat, you know what I mean? And let's change a camera angle here. And um, I think the, the thing I liked most is the, how they, how they portrayed Liam Neeson's brother, who was a war veteran who had had um, an interesting character. Yeah. yeah, he was like he had, I think it's called dysphagia, where yeah. the words coming out of his mouth are not the words that he has in his brain. Um, yeah. There's a it's it's a misfiring. And so what comes out of his mouth is not necessarily uh, coherent. I mean, they're words, but they don't make any sense. And um, so you kind of have to work through that. But he's he's a compassionate guy. He's smart. Um, you know, they you can tell how Liam Neeson really cares about him. And I liked that aspect of the story because it really it provides some caring moments to it. It provides a little yeah. bit of, you know, of heart to this. And so if if one or either of them are in trouble, you know, you're like, ooh, I don't want, I like you. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Mm. Um, I liked the fact that you get to see how, when the trucks are pushed over to one side, you see how technical it is and how they can use these gadgets to lift the trucks back up. I thought that was really clever. And I was like, oh, I want to see more of that. Um, I think I probably liked it more because uh, I love uh, ice road truckers. My wife and I used to watch a couple of sister series and it actually just made me want to go back and watch more of those, (laughs) uh, which tells you something about the movie. But this will make you laugh. If you think about the film as Taken 4 and Liam Neeson trying to find his miners, you know, (laughs) then uh, (laughs) then it's a good film. (laughs) I will find you. (laughs) Yeah. That, okay. So, okay. 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 so I need to watch it from that perspective now. That's yeah, how I'm absolutely. gonna. <laughs> yeah. He's retired, but he's still got the skills. I have a certain set of skills. And, uh... <laughs> I will find you. And I will yeah. Find you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. <laughs> that's it for my list. Do uh, yeah, you have thanks. like honorable have mentions or anything? Honorable mentions. So one is Sasquatch. Have you seen it? I saw the. Yeah. Um, I saw the first episode. Um, on a special screening at South by Southwest. And I was intrigued by it. Like it was yeah. enough to make me go, ooh, I kind of like where this is going. And because it's filmed and it takes place in Northern California. So it's only a couple hours away from where I live. That's, that's so there was, close to me. Yeah, yeah. So what, so, tell me about the it. The story is excellent. Like it's really interesting, except it's not about a Sasquatch at all, at all. Like on my review, you just need to go down the comment section to see how pissed off people are because people went in thinking, okay, there's this whole kind of law behind a Sasquatch that people have seen and it, it's mixed up with the cartel some, somewhat and you're like, what? But no, it just goes heavily into the cartel stuff and it's really like it's interesting and just nasty and you're like, I never want to go up to those deals there ever. Um, if that's what goes on and it you know it was fairly recent as well you're like gosh yeah okay that's 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 nasty and scary but it has nothing to do with sasquatch and i was in i was like bigfoot and the hendersons sign me up man and yeah so it's just from a purely they 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 marketed it as if it had something to do with the sasquatch it's on the poster yeah uh, that's just naughty that's that's yeah they got people watching and then people are just like what on earth so total clickbait then right absolutely 100 percent. Oh. oh that's too bad and uh, another TV series by Netflix. I think you might have something to say about this one. Uh, Dad, stop embarrassing me. <laughs> I didn't actually watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I watched the trailer for it and I uh, was like, you know what? I'm not sure I could sit through all of this because um, it just, it, no. So tell me what, what, what? <laughs> oh, there. Well, that's, that says it all. 
Jamie Foxx, right? Like, I was like, I'm gonna watch this. It's Jamie Foxx. How bad could it be? He he was totally invested in it. He was like, this is his project. He said it was gonna be excellent. I trust the man. The man's got Oscars behind him. You know, this dude can act. A sitcom with him is gonna be great. The thing is, it starts off with dad jokes because it says, dad, stop embarrassing me. They don't land at all, ever. Mm. Like, it's not funny. It's him trying to be cool with his daughters and it never comes off, like, it never works. And then there's the canned laughter that I just wish we would get away from this now. In the 90s, cool stuff, man. But comedies don't work that way anymore. You can't take actors now with the technology that we have now, um, place them with everything that we know with how society works now, you know, culture, um, relevance, and then take what worked back then and put it in a, a comedy series now. Mm. It just was so cringy. So every time there's a joke, there's a pause for canned laughter and you're like, ah, oh, you're forcing me to laugh at something that I'm not finding funny and I'm not laughing. So it came off as a double whammy. You're like, I'm not laughing and you're making this canned laughter trying to think that your joke is funny. Okay, so I'm not um, African-American. Um, maybe that is what is towards the demographic, but if your comedy series isn't funny enough for me to watch, then you missed the mark somewhere because I used to grow up watching the Cosbys, laughing my head off, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you know, still not African-American, but laughing my head off. I can go back and watch Fresh Prince now and laugh my head off. And, uh, you know, so I don't think it's a color thing. I don't, I don't think it's a culture thing. I just think it's bad. It's just not funny. Yeah, it's just, oh. it's, yeah, there was no, ha ha, you got me, good one. Yeah. Well, I, I will add a, uh, a series that I, I've only watched really part of because I couldn't watch the rest of it. It's, uh, I think it's called Mr. Iglesias, Julio, or Julio Gabriel Iglesias, fluffy right. stand-up comedian. I love his work. I, I think he is just so hilarious. I mean, we quote him often at home from a lot of his specials and right. his, his show is so forced and it uses that canned laughter also. You know, he's the premise is that he's this high school teacher with, um, I think, history teacher or something, you know, yeah. and it's just every single moment is so forced. You're taking a funny man and making him unfunny. And yeah. it just, you know, you're putting him in situations where if you just let him do his thing, he would be so, so funny in it. And it just every at every single turn, the writing is just. Ugh, it, it. This drives me up the wall about Netflix in particular because there's a, there's a, they even do, did a crossover, didn't they? Where they took Mr. Inglésias, they took um, a couple of the other sitcoms that they have, and they did like this weird world, like a Superman uh, crossover with the superheroes. You know, like you get the DC world. They did that with Netflix um, because they thought that their world was like everybody was watching, but it has mm -hmm. really low numbers as far as I'm aware because everybody talks it about. It in the, like really bad. Uh, so you take Mr. Inglesias, you have the crew. There's a crew crew one with another comedian with Kevin racing James. Cars, nice car, Kevin James, yeah. Um, there's that as well. And there's like a few others. Um, the the wrestler, uh, the big show. Uh, oh, yeah, he I've has a TV, TV series that's along the similar lines. They, they keep funding all of these. Maybe they don't cost that much and so they can spew them out. But then they take really great series that sometimes get one season and then just cancel them. And people are like, what? Like has a massive following already from one season. They're like, no, sorry. Like, what are you doing to us? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. So Bad stuff. Maybe we'll have to do um, our best ones because it's it's sad talking about the bad stuff <laughs> but it is funny too i mean we live all the, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> the cringeworthy moments and just the wasted efforts oh yeah oh man so that's 2021 halfway halfway Who knows yeah, what else we'll have <laughs> by the end of it oh goodness yeah the worst movies we've watched so far that's um Maybe we should revisit this at the end of the year and see what else we, what did we see in the last half that was just, ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm not sure there's gonna be a few. I, I, I have a feeling, but there are, there are some really great ones, or at least theoretically some really great ones that I'm looking forward to coming out too, so. Uh, Any ones in particular that you're really excited about? Um, I, The Green Knight, mm. um, Suicide Squad, yeah. Dune, yeah. Um, those, Three, there's oh old i'm seeing oh. old um in the theater this this coming week yeah on thursday night so I'm, it. 
Uh, no, I bought tickets for it. So okay. I'm, yeah, I'm excited to go see that. I think, you know, M. Night Shyamalan um, is, is kind of checkered. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, I like when he's doing his thing. Um, you know, yeah. he doesn't always land. Hopefully those the, the twist is actually a twist this time. Because there's yes. been a few where he's done the reveal and you're like, what the? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Happening? Yeah. <laughs> the earth doesn't like me. Okay. <laughs> oh, <that laughs> Mother Nature says no. <laughs> yes, that, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, so that looks really good. Yeah. Um, there's one called Pig that a few of my friends have seen um, that apparently is Nicolas Cage's best film, his best performance since uh, films like Raising Arizona. Um, so I'm very excited to see Nicolas Cage do something because I feel like we have a cornucopia of his films recently and he's we've seen him start to creep up back into oh he's actually starting to pull out some decent performances the film isn't good because he's done so many where the film isn't good um and no one's gonna sit here and say uh that one it's your birthday what was that one with the, the oh machines yeah um possessed. willie's willie's wonderland yeah but his performance was great um although he didn't say a single word <laughs> right but him in it so i'm really looking forward to seeing what he does that and maybe finally getting to see antlers that the horror that gets keep getting pushed back I think it's oh my gosh i had forgotten about that one yeah yeah that's that... october apparently so okay fingers crossed yes yes great right. so if you're watching this let us know in the comments which were your worst films so far of 2021 um and which one were you shocked at us saying how could you say that about that film that was the best film i've seen ever uh, <laughs> That's yeah, ab fun. absolutely. Yeah, no, I, 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 hopefully the ones on our list were not at your top of like your yeah. best, but yeah. you may be, that might be. So I, let's have the discussion. I think that's fun. I'm really good. <laughs> All right, Ruben. Well, this was yeah. awesome. Till next good. time. Yeah. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Awkward smile. <laughs> Oops. Nope. Wait, nope. Still recording. <laughs>